Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about decimals and specifically how to convert fractions into decimals. Here's our standard and our learning scale for this section, which leads us to our learning goal where you hope to understand the relationship between fractions and decimals and easily compare and answer questions about the two. Before we get started, it's important that we review our place value. We know that as we move from from the left to the right, our value of our digits gets smaller and smaller with each digit that we come to. We need to remember that when we're working on the left side of the decimal, we have our bigger digits. We have our hundreds, our tens, our ones. When we move to the right side of the decimal, we have our tenths, our hundredths, and our thousandths. It's important that we start to think of the relationship between fractions and decimals to help us easily answer problems. When we're looking at this 2, it is 2 tenths, or 2 out of 10, when we're thinking about a whole. It's not quite a whole number, which is why it's not over here on the left side. It's 2 tenths of a whole. When we move over to look at our 3, we would consider this 3 to be 3 hundredths. It's in the hundredths place. It's 3 hundredths of a whole. Again, as we move over and we look at our 7, it's in the thousandths place, which means that it is 7 thousandths, which means that you would need quite a bit more to create a whole. It's only 7 out of 1,000. We're going to try and turn this fraction into a decimal. Um, don't forget that if we need to reference our place value, it's up there in the corner. I think one of the easiest things about turning fractions into decimals and vice versa is first saying it out loud. 63 hundredths. You know what that would look like um, if we're talking about a model of a fraction. And we obviously have it written for us as a fraction now. To turn it into a decimal, we need to... First, take a look at our denominator, because that's going to tell us our place value. We're working um, with hundredths, so we know that it needs to be the second digit to the right of the decimal. We have 63. Our last new number in our numerator needs to be the one in the hundredths spot. So when we were, if we were to write this as a decimal, we know that it's not a whole, because a whole would be a hundred. We have our decimal, and then we would write 63, because we have the tenths place and we have the hundredths place. And when we say this out loud, we would say this decimal as 63 hundredths, just like when we would say the fraction 63 hundredths. Let's try another one. We're working with 3 tenths. Again, we first look at our denominator to know what place value we're working with. We know that we're working with the number right to the right of the decimal. We know that the number, the last number in the numerator, needs to end up in that tenth spot. For us, there's only one. So we have our decimal and we have three. We have our three in the tenths place. We would say this three tenths. We would also say our fraction as being three tenths. Therefore, we've just turned our decimal, I mean our fraction into a decimal. Let's look at one more together before you try it on your own. Again, take a look at where your uh, what your denominator tells you. We know it's in the thousandths place. We know that that is three places away from the decimal. Write your decimal. We know we need to fill in those three places, and that last digit in the numerator needs to be in the thousandths place. We have a five in the tens, tenths place. We have a four in the hundredths place. And we have our one in the thousandths place. When we say this decimal aloud, we have 541 thousandths. When we say our fraction aloud, we have 541 thousandths as well. Take a look at this fraction and turn it into a decimal. Take a look at this fraction and turn it into a decimal. 
And lastly, take a look at this fraction and turn it into a decimal. Best of luck, and I'll see you tomorrow.